just it's getting cooler here. So anyway, um, all right, welcome back for this next uh, lecture. We're going to continue from where we paused. Um, any questions on the previous lecture? Any thoughts, any things anyone wants to ask or discuss? Okay. All right, so let's go forward. Um, so we were talking about, <clears throat> you know, how to live this life in Christ, right? So we said, uh, first we said, we live out of that completed work, the work that God has completed for us in Christ. We live out of that. Second, we live with a renewed mind. Third, we must walk in the spirit. Then we must walk in Christ, as walking in conformity, in alignment to Christ is. Then we are to be rooted in the person of Christ, be rooted in him. And then we move forward now to talk about, Paul also said, Colossians 2, 7, be rooted in him and built up, built up in him, built up. Now he's using that word um, built up. Actually, it's the idea of uh, a building. You know, it's like uh, uh, construction. You know, you're, you're, you're constructing a building layer by layer. You are being built up. So, that's the idea. He's talking about us being built up layer by layer, like a, how a building is being constructed. And uh, of course, he says, as, uh, you know, uh, built up him, then we'll be established in the faith and we will overflow with thanksgiving. Now, that word built up really, uh, you know, we we need to look at how Paul is using those those words in other places in scripture to understand what's he trying to get at, right? And so, uh, you know, if we go to Ephesians 4, 13 and 15, uh, and, and again, I'm, I'm just pulling this out from the classic, uh, Amplified Bible Classic Edition, but he uses the same word, built up, you know? And uh, uh, here he talks about being built up in the context of growing up to in all things to be like Jesus. So then you understand, okay, what's he having in his mind? When he says we have to be built up in Christ, because he's using that same word uh, and he's explaining it further in Ephesians. So he says to be built up really means that we are growing up into Christ in everything. Or the Amplified Bible says uh, we are growing into mature manhood, the completeness of personality. You know, which is you know going into the full measure of Christ's own perfection, or grow up in every way and all things into Him. Right. So to be built up is to grow up in every way and all things into Christ. So as we are living this life in Christ, part of the process is we are becoming more like Christ. We are growing up in all things to be like him. So we are living in conformity to who he is. We are rooted in the person of Jesus, drawing our strength and our stability and our source supply from him. And we're also growing up to become like him. And we understand this, you know, we understand in the Bible there are different stages of spiritual growth, the spiritual birth, we have babies, and then we grow into mature uh, maturity or perfection in Christ. So there's this process of growth we understand spiritually. So think about this again, you know, although we are complete in Christ, yet we are growing up in Christ, right? So the completeness is the spiritual thing God has done for us. The practical thing is, look, we are all growing up now in Christ. We're being built up in him. And we are being built up into what? Into being like him in all things. We are being built up or growing up to become like him. So our prayer must be 
Jesus, I want to be more like you. In every way. It says, grow up in every way and in all things. So in every area of life, you know, personal, family, ministry, social life, that is in how we relate to other people, in every area of life, our prayer is, Lord, uh, we want to grow up in all things to be like Jesus. In every way, grow up to be like him. So that's part of our living in our life in Christ, letting the Lord build us up, make us more like him. And that should be a constant prayer. I want to be more like Jesus. If we are not pursuing that, then we won't be able to live out of our life in Christ because that's the ultimate purpose. I mean, you're living out your life from him, your life in Christ. The ultimate purpose, we will see this shortly, is for us to become like him. And so that's the goal. That's what we are striving towards. And the last in him instruction we find in scripture is to abide in him. And this instruction was given to us by Jesus himself. And we know this passage in John 15, right? A very familiar passage, John 15, 1 to 8. Jesus said, I am the vine, true vine. My father is the vine dresser. And, you know, we are all, we are all branches in that vine. So Jesus is the vine, we are branches in the vine. And the branches, of course, bear fruit. The branches are connected to the vine, and the life of the vine is flowing in the branches. But throughout this passage, Jesus gives us an instruction. His instruction is, abide in me. And he repeats this over and over again. Abide in me. 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 Right, so he's saying, look, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You've got to abide in me. And I've got to be abiding in you. Or my words have got to be abiding in you. Meaning, this whole connectedness must be there. So, there are these instructions the Bible has given to us on how to live this new creation life. It says we have to be renewed in our minds. We have to walk in the Spirit. We have to walk in Him. We have to be rooted in Him. We have to be built up in Him. And then Jesus Himself gave us this instruction. We've got to abide in Him. So the word abide is a very simple word. It simply means to stay where you are. You know, remain, continue, dwell, you know, settle down there. I mean, no, no changing in position. Talking about us being continually connected to Jesus. Because you know, he gave this illustration of the vine and the branches. Obviously, we know if you break the vine or the branch of the vine, the branch is going to die. It'll dry up. Then it's going to be just used as firewood. So he's saying, look, you've got to stay connected because the moment you see is being connected, you can't bear fruit. You will also dry up. And it's of no use. So stay connected. And this whole thought of abiding in Jesus, you know, uh, is 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 uh, really elaborated by John in his epistle, especially first epistle. You know, uh, he talks about abiding in Him, and abiding in Him. You now you keep His word. We know that we are in Him. Uh, Abide in him. No, uh, he, he repeats this word, abiding in Christ, in his epistle. Right? And uh, by just looking at scripture, we can say, look, when, when, when somebody's abiding in Christ, what will happen? They will take on the mind of Christ. They will be thankful in everything. They will be taught by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is teaching them. By, by the word of God. They're going to be walking in obedience. They're going to be 
walking in holiness. In other words, you know, for us to stay connected with Him, we've got to keep out things that disconnect us from Him. Now, when I say disconnect, I'm not saying, you know, He will just throw us off and we uh, spiritually lose our position in Christ. No. It's talking about relationship, that connectedness, you and I, we abiding in Him and He abiding in us through His Word. So there's that spiritual harmony. There's that spiritual connectedness that we have with Jesus. And there are things like sin and, you know, other things that, that disrupt that connectedness. So we keep those things away and protect our abiding in Christ, protect our connectedness with Him, because that's very precious. And it's in that place that His life can be expressed through us. We can bear fruit. People will see Jesus in our lives and so on. Okay, so if you put this all together, what is the scripture instructing us to live out of our life in Christ? Scripture is teaching us to renew our mind, walk in the spirit, walk aligned to Christ, be rooted in Christ, be built up in Christ, and to abide in Christ. This is what the scripture is instructing us. It says you, you, you live like this. And if you live like this, you'll be able to live out of that union that you have with Christ and live out of your identity, live out of your inheritance that is in Jesus. And that's our goal. Renew your mind to that. That in any situation, who I am in Christ, what is my inheritance? I'm going to walk in it. My, I'm going to walk aligned to who Jesus is. What is the Holy Spirit saying? I'm going to follow his instruction. I'm going to be rooted in the person of Christ, not be shaken from that. I'm going to make sure that in everything, I'm going to grow up to be like him. And I'm going to protect my connectedness with him so that nothing should interfere with that. You live like that. We will live out of our life in Christ. Now, the last closing thought that I just want to leave with us is, why did God bring us to be in Christ? He brought us in Him so that we could all be like Him. So God brought us into Christ so that we could be like Christ. And that's, that's really the heart of the Father. Right? He wants a people. He wants a family of sons and daughters. And He made Jesus, who is the Son of God, to be the prototype. And we're all to be conformed to that image. And in order to make that possible, he said, I'll put you in that image. I'll put you into that mold. You know, that makes absolute sense, right? Suppose you want something in a certain image. What do you do? You put it into the mold. So example, Jesus is the mold. He says, I want you all to be like him. So I'll put you all in the mold. He put us in Christ. Now we're in him. And he says, okay, the work is complete. I've put you in Christ. The work is complete. But in everyday life, I want you to live out of that so that in practice, in practical life, you will also be like him. That's what he's after. So we are in him to be like him. And you can find scriptures on this. First John 2, 6 says, he who abides in him, that's you're talking about being in Christ. What will happen? You are to walk just as he walked. Now think about it. Walk just as he walked. What a high standard. I mean, so conduct yourself, live your life just as Jesus lived. If you are in him, live like him. Be like him. 
is what the scripture is saying. Then in 1 John 4, 17, it says, Love has been perfected among us. That means we have love of God filling us, perfecting itself in us. And so we have boldness in the day of judgment. So we are not afraid of judgment day. No, we are not afraid of it. Why? Because. As he is, so are we in this world. Because we are right now living just like Jesus. To put it in simple terms. We are living just like Jesus. Or all that Jesus is. So are we in this world. As he is, so are we. Our life is in this world is the same as his. Right. So, we are here to be like him. And we are living in this world like him. Right. So that's the ultimate thing. Now, we are not, uh, obviously, we have not arrived yet in the, in the natural. Spiritual God has done the work. In the natural, it's an ongoing process, of course. But that's our goal, to be like him. And that's what we should be after. Lord, I, I just want to live this life the way you would live it. And I want people to see Jesus in me. Right? So we are in Christ to be like Christ. Now, let me, let's do a quick review of this entire course. I'm just looking at the course outline, the very first document I gave, you know. So what did we cover in this course of our identity in Christ? And I divided this into, initially I divided into 12, then I made it 13 sections. And let's review this. So in the first section, we talked about the revelation that Jesus himself said that we will receive the revelation of our being in him and him being in us. And the Apostle Paul started writing about this revelation. Then in section two, he looked at what does it mean to be a new creation? You know, we have a new identity. We have, we're totally new. And we use that, you know, that uh, uh, analogy or a comparison of how an orphan boy in the slum is adopted by a rich family. You know, how, what, a, what a difference it would make in his life. This thing is in a similar way, but in a much greater way. God took us into his family. Everything became new. And uh, then we understand who we are. And a new creation will change the way we relate to God. It will change the way we relate to one another. It will change the way we face life situations. It will change the way we confront demonic powers. Uh, it will change our own image of ourselves. It will change everything. Then we said, you know, some of the key things we see in Scripture is we are justified. We are made righteous in the eyes of God. There is no condemnation against us. We have been made holy. So God has already said we are holy people. We are called saints. And therefore, we live like saints, because he made us saints. Then we spent two weeks on you know, being identified with Christ. That is, we are identified with Christ's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating at the right hand of the Father. We are identified with that. What happened to him happened to us, and uh, there's, there's relevance to it. You know, our old man is crucified. Are we are buried, the whole life is gone, we've been raised, we have a new life, we have been ascended, we are separated from this world, we are seated, we are in a place of authority. Then we talked about the fact that we are redeemed. Now God has taken us out of the powers of darkness, he has brought us into his own kingdom. Satan has no right over us, no claim over us. Then we talked about the fact that we are free. We are free from man-made rituals, man-made ideas. We are free from vain forms of worship and tr traditions. So we are free in Christ, and yet uh, we exercise our freedom with, uh, out of love, out of the place of love. So love overrides the exercise of our freedom. So we don't exercise our freedom in a way that would hurt somebody else or... Uh, offend somebody else. No, 
We are free, but we let love guide us. Then we also said we are children and joint heirs. And this is the highest honor that God could give to us to make us his heirs and joint heirs. That means he's going to come. You're next in line, so to speak. You're, you're heirs. You're next in line. You're my children. I mean, there's this, 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 no higher honor God could have given to us. So we are in that place of high honor that God has put on us in Christ. Then we talked about the fact that we are blessed. We went through so many blessings, different blessings. So we just call that section blessed, but then we listed almost, I think, about 20 different blessings uh, that we can identify, uh, not including the ones we'd already seen earlier. Uh, we are blessed in Christ. To be in Christ also means we are one body. That means we are connected to everybody else who's in Christ. And so we learn how to live as one body. We honor other churches that are also in Christ, and uh, we recognize that. Uh, we also, uh, so, uh, uh, I also added one more chapter called The Spirit of Life in Christ. I added it here, section 5, The Spirit of Life. So there we emphasize the work of the Spirit in us living uh, this life in Christ. So I added that while you were going along. And then we talked about the fact that we are ministers and ambassadors in Christ. We have our ministry in the Lord. Every one of us, we are ministers and we are ambassadors in Christ. And lastly, in the closing, which we did today, we talked about the instructions God has given to us on living the in Christ life. This is what he's told us. This is how you must live because you are in Christ. And that's how we live out of our identity and our inheritance and the life that we have in Jesus Christ. So, with that, we come to the end of this course in our study. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, I'm going to put out three assessments. I need to work on it, and hopefully this week I'll make time to do that. I'll create three simple assessments for you uh, based on this content. I'll put it out in the coursework in Google Classroom and also the e-learning portal for students who are studying on the e-learning portal. And the rest of November is just um, for you to finish these three assessments, and uh, you'll be done with the course. Mm, that's it. But most importantly, I want you to live by these things that you've learned. Um, that uh, you put it, make it part of your life. Uh, and I cannot, I'm trying to be contained in what I'm saying, but you know, if there was one thing you tell me, what should we teach believers? I would say, teach them about their identity in Christ. That's like the first and the most important thing. Teach them about that and let it just sink into them. And sometimes you have to repeat it, you know, 10 times to the same thing. You have to keep repeating it before it really sits in. All of us need that, you know, because we may not get it the first time. So we keep hearing it again and again and again until it really settles into our hearts. It's okay, this is who I am. And we need to be reminded because we tend to forget. And so I, I, would, I cannot overemphasize um, how important this revelation is on our identity in Christ and keep repeating it till it sinks into you and sinks into you know the people that you might be ministering to, that it sinks into their hearts that this is who we are and we have to live out of that. Okay? And um, uh, we are actually working on expanding this as a book and we will release it. And uh, then, you know, you will get the, the, the full PDF will be available on our church website. And you can use it for your own spiritual growth and to teach others, build them up. And, uh, yeah, so we can strengthen the body of Christ. Any questions before we close off for today? Okay, 
Yeah, I want to thank uh, each of you for being part of this uh, course. I hope you found it enriching and useful. And uh, we will, I'll see you on Friday when we get into our course on, when we wrap up our course on faith. And uh, yeah, it's been a good journey. And I trust uh, many of you will continue on. Uh, next semester, we will have some, um, again, some good courses. Uh, I would be usually teaching a hermeneutics, that is how to interpret scripture. And uh, I'm not sure what else I teach in the second semester. But yeah, and for those of you who are, will be going into your third semester, uh, again, you have some uh, interesting courses as well. Okay. Um, who would like to pray the closing prayer? And um, and then we can dismiss. Anyone can please pray with the whole class. Would like to do that. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Enoch. Shall we pray? Father, we want to say thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everything you have done for us. The gift of life. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord, for this school. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to learn at your feet. Mm -hmm. We give you all the glory. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. My Father, my God, all we have learned today, please, Lord, we want to be a doer of your word. Mm -hmm. Sinking into our lives and let there be reflection of your glory in us in the name of Jesus Christ. As we are going to our various offices, various work, various ministry. Daddy, God Almighty, you will be with us all the days in the name of Jesus. Mm. And we commit the rest of the lectures into your able hands, O Lord. It shall be a for signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Thank you for our lecturer whom you have used today. We ask, O Lord, Daddy, refresh him afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Strengthen him more and more. And all the lecturers and all the students. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being part of this course. So just Thank look out. You. God bless you. Just look out Thank for you. the assessments. And I'll see you all again soon. God bless. Bye now. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Sir? God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.